The Titanic will forever be one of the great tragedies of the 20th century. A steamship, boasted to have been the very latest in technology and comfort, turned out to have been a death trap for so many of the ship's passengers. A lucky few were able to make it into the ship's lifeboats, but there were not enough to hold all the people aboard. When it came down to it, the ship was neither unsinkable, nor was it even all that comfortable for anyone who wasn't traveling in first class. Case in point are the menus from the infamous ship. The Titanic now lies at the bottom of the ocean, but mementos like the ship's menus that were either unused copies or were sent by passengers to loved ones have survived as souvenirs of this ill-fated voyage. There were three different menus printed for each class of passenger, first, second, and third, and you better believe there are quite a few differences between each of them. First class menu. Nothing but the finest would do for those in first class. These passengers had paid a much higher ticket price, and as such they expected larger rooms, better outdoor deck spaces, and a higher caliber of food to be served to them. At the time, only the wealthiest could have afforded a ticket this expensive, and the crew was tasked with meeting the high expectations from first-class passengers. By some estimations, a first-class suite ticket would have cost a hundred times what a third-class passenger paid for their place in steerage. The dining rooms aboard the Titanic were different based on who they were for. The first class dining room had carved wooden chairs, smaller dining tables for intimate meals, and elegant decor that spoke of wealth and luxury. This is the first class menu from April 14, 1912, the last meal served aboard the ship. The menus for first class were printed for each meal, so there were three a day. They included a buffet, as well as grill items and an offering of cheeses. Among the menu items for this privileged group was a clear consomme, cockaleeky soup, which is a traditional Scottish leek and coxcomb soup, fish fillets, chicken a la Maryland, which is just a fancy name for fried chicken, corned beef, dumplings, and a variety of grilled meat items. For dessert, there was custard pudding, apple meringue, or pastry. The buffet was filled with potted shrimp, salmon mayonnaise, Norwegian anchovies, smoked herring and sardines, roast beef, veal and ham pie, galantine of chicken, and ox tongue, among many other delights. Second class menu. The second class dining room was quite serviceable, but had long tables which were shared, more like a cafeteria style. While the digs may have been different, the menu still had quite a lot of choices to offer the second-class traveler. This was the mid-range ticket price, and standards aired on the side of quality when compared to third class. For the would-be diner in second class on April 14th, the menu offered consomme with tapioca, baked haddock in a sharp sauce, curried chicken with rice, roast turkey with cranberry sauce, green peas, pureed turnips, rice, and both boiled and roast potatoes. For dessert, there was plum pudding, wine jelly, coconut sandwich cookies, American ice cream, assorted nuts, and fresh fruit. There was also coffee, cheese, and biscuits available. Unlike first class, there was no beer listed on the menu. Third class menu. The third class dining room was even more like a cafeteria with many of the decorative trappings omitted. This was a signal to all who entered that only the bare minimum had been paid for. This was basic travel for the poor, many of whom were immigrating in the hopes of a better life. The third class menu for the 14th of April was so short that the whole day fit onto one sheet of paper. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. For breakfast, there was oatmeal with milk, smoked herring, jacket potatoes, ham and eggs, and fresh bread with butter. This last one was probably a free side dish in first class and not even mentioned on their menu. With those items came marmalade, as well as a Swedish bread, which was probably more like a sweet rye bread. All this was served with tea or coffee. Lunch is not listed. Instead, the working class term of dinner is used. This illustrious meal consisted of rice soup, bread, cabin biscuits, which are glorified crackers, roast beef with gravy, sweet corn, boiled potatoes, and a choice of either plum pudding or fresh fruit for dessert. The first evening meal was referred to as tea, and contained cold meat, cheese, pickles, stewed figs with rice, and tea. The final evening meal, resembling more of a late night snack, was called supper and consisted of more cabin biscuits, cheese, and gruel. It's hard to imagine gruel listed as a menu item on a world-class ship, but here it is. No beer was on offer for this group. 
On the bottom of the third class menu, unlike the other two menus, there is a note about those who wish to complain about the poor food in third class. Any complaint respecting the food supplied, want of attention, or incivility should at once be reported to the purser or chief steward. For purposes of identification, each steward wears a numbered badge on the arm.